for you! Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and I am a shameless fan of getting free stuff. Especially free tactical stuff, and especially stuff I literally at one point had in my Amazon uh, shopping cart and then was offered it. Hmm, <laughs> fabulous. Uh, I needed a flashlight like this for a build that we'll, well, we'll see in this video, and uh, I can always use more reflex sights because I use them a lot. So, let's take a look at the reflex sight because it's fairly straightforward. Uh, comes with a cleaning cloth, that's handy. The instructions, of course. Does come with a spare battery. That is also always nice when they do that. And it comes with all of the tools necessary. Two different size Allen keys there. And then we have our sight. A nifty little reflex sight. Not in my colors. I forgot to mention anything about that. I don't know if they even come in any, well, I'm sure they come in other colors, but uh, came in this dark tan, I think is what they called it. Um, there's probably a fancy term in the, hobby. Anyway, um, it's fairly straightforward. It's got a power button on the side. You hold it down to turn it on. And then if you uh, poke it, it changes the intensity. So uh, stay on camera. Uh, no, there it is. There's several different levels of how bright it can be just by pushing that side button. And then holding down the button will turn it off so you don't drain your battery. Back on. And then it has multiple different reticle options. So again, let's see if I can actually get it on. There we go. There's just a dot, circle and a dot, cross, cross and a circle and a dot. Yeah, neat. Pretty schnazzy, pretty schnazzy. <coughs> um, the tools that come with it allow you to both attach it and to adjust it. So you're your right, left, your up, down. Uh, if you need to disassemble it, take it apart so you can get to the, the batteries. I think the batteries are up here. Sure looks like it. Yep, there's where your batteries go. So they are easy to get out, do not require a tool, unless you tighten it down really, really tight. Ah, yeah, standard Picatinny rail. So if you're looking for a site that isn't black, because that isn't might not be your color, here's an option. Very nice, very nice. I don't know what I'll put it on because I don't have anything that isn't orange and black, but I do know folks who do go with other colors, so I'm sure I will find somebody that I can foist this upon. But very nice. Do they have a name for it? The RS30, link will be in the description, of course. So, looking for a reflex sight, there's an option. The other one is the flashlight. Incidentally, all of this came to me from Feachi. They send me some pretty cool stuff. And here they have sent me a tactical flashlight, the exact kind that I was looking at. I'm pretty, like I said, I'm pretty sure I had this exact one in my Amazon uh, shopping cart at one point. And uh, now, now it's mine. Anyway, we've got some additional hardware. It's got uh, M-Lock uh, options and rather than Picatinny rail, if that's your preference. Um, we have a charging cable. We have a battery charger for the batteries that came with it. It comes with two fairly substantial batteries. I'm sure I looked up what they were. They were larger than I was expecting, I thought. Oh no, these are 18650s. Okay, so these are 18650s. Uh, it does come with two spare, one and a spare, which is nice. Uh, we then have our actual flashlight, which has built-in Picatinny rail. The Picatinny rail does not come off. Um, or actually, I take that back. You can take the Picatinny rail off and then attach the M-lock. Uh, the mounting that it's on doesn't come off, but you can take the two Picatinny rail sides off. Uh, it also comes with the tool necessary. Uh, no, it doesn't come with the tool necessary to take the Picatinny rail off. It does come with the tool necessary to install the new ones. You'll need a slightly smaller one. I wonder if it's the one that's in here. I doubt it. No, it's not. So, um, if you want to switch over to the M-Lock, you will need an Allen key in order to get this side off. But uh, other than that, um, it does come with the hardware for that. So, screw the back off and you put in your battery. 
and we'll see what mode it's currently in. All right, I'm going to attempt to show the features. It's been giving me some guff, and I'm not sure if I'm just using it wrong or if uh, it has some issues. I'll go into some issues that it had towards the end. So it's got one button, one button on the back, you push it, turns on. That's fairly straightforward. You push it and it locks and it'll stay on. You can also partially push it and it'll come on and then if you let go it'll turn off. It, you, it, you've got momentary and you've got locking, which is neat. Um, now, I, it is currently in mode two out of three. Mode two is on off, it's always high. That's the only setting it has, no matter what you do with the button, it's just gonna go into high. Um, and I wish that was the default because it seems to keep switching back to the default mode. And I don't know if that's me accidentally uh, switching or if it's just having issues and not remembering what state it's supposed to stay in. In order to intentionally switch, you push the back button partially, momentary, nine times and then hold it on 10 and when the flashlight turns off it'll have switched into the next mode. Uh, I'm gonna do that off camera so you don't have to deal with the strobing. There is gonna be a lot of strobing but right now it's push it, it comes on. If you, you know, you can make it strobe just by pushing the button but it doesn't actually have a strobe feature. So here we go, I'm gonna switch to mode two or three which is high and low. So here we go. Okay, so now I should have high if I push it and if I double tap it it goes into a slightly lower setting and then it will default back to high but I can go to low and then lock it in low and it will stay at the low setting. If I turn it off, turn it back on, it goes back to high. So we do have a slightly lower setting. It's not a whole lot lower but it is, I mean I can noticeably tell that it's lower. I don't know how well it's translating on camera there. Anyway, those are your two settings now. Double tap will go to low, default to high. Now. The default setting is the one that has strobe and that I wish it didn't keep defaulting back to. Um, but here we go, we're gonna go back to that one. Oh, well, it looks like we've accidentally, see, it's defaulted back. So double tap and now we have strobe. And we can lock in strobe. And if we turn it off, turn it back on, it will go into strobe. It remembers whatever it was last set to. If we wanna go back to high, double tap, and now it will stay in high. And I wish it wouldn't default to that because I really don't want strobe setting but it keeps seems to keep reverting back to that. Now this may be the result of a, a, an issue that this had when I got it. Out of the box, full disclosure, out of the box this one did not work. I put the battery in, nothing. I put a fresh battery that I knew was good in, nothing. Recharge their batteries, put them in, nothing. It was not working. However, the design of this is such that you can, in fact, completely disassemble it and get to the guts. And I was able to get in and figure out where the flaw was and I was able to get it working. Now, the flaw that caused that may also be indicative of the flaw that's preventing it from staying in the mode I want it to stay in. So there may be some quality assurance issues, some QA issues here. I may just have gotten unlucky and picked up the one that wasn't working. They did just send it to me directly from Amazon, so yeah. Full disclosure, that's an issue. Now, the fact that it wasn't working is an issue. The fact that it is fully disassemblable and can be repaired, that I actually think is a note in their favor. It could have been one where you can't open it up. Everything's you know, pressed in or soldered in or glued in or whatever, but this, it, it all threaded in. And so I was able to take it all back apart. So, yeah, take that as you will. Now, the feature that made me excited about this isn't all of that. I did, I was glad that it had Picatinny rail, but it also has this, which is a button that has a wire on it. So we can take the rear cap off Put this cap on. And now we've got rail attached buttons. This can also be attached to your rail or to M-lock, presumably. And then this could be on the rail. Um, and these are now your buttons. So it's got two buttons. It's got one that is a locking button that you push it and it locks. And then if you momentary press it, it turns it off so you can hold it partially down to turn it back off or it will stay on or you've got another button here that is momentary on 
Now, it does have the strobe, and hypothetically I should be able to switch modes using this. I'm gonna try that right now and I'll let you know how it works. Sure enough, I was able to switch into mode two and now it should only have high setting, which is what I want for this. But like I said, it tends to keep defaulting back to the strobe, but that may be just because I keep poking the button and I'm inadvertently actually activating the mode switch. I'm not sure. Um, what exactly is going on there, or it could be a factory flaw. If it continues to misbehave, I'll get a different one. Um, but this is something that I wanted because I was wanting to put a flashlight onto one of my blasters, and it really needed this kind of a setup. I was planning to do it uh, the hard way. This made it the easy way. So let me toss all of the accoutrement um, back in the box and we'll pull over the blaster and get it installed. So the blaster... Oh! I do need to do one thing first, though. Which is, where's the tool? This button it has a, a Picatinny rail mount, but like the blaster, it can be made for M-Lock, and so it does come off the Picatinny rail mount. Simply take out two bolts right there, and now our button comes loose and you could put on M-Lock ones, or you could screw this to whatever you wanted. Which, of course, is what I'm going to do. I'm going to screw it to the forward handle on my smart gun. Uh, there, there is convenient Picatinny rail right here under the barrel. And that is where I'll be putting the flashlight. Alright, and there it is. We have the flashlight mounted there, and we have the buttons mounted on the underside of the foregrip. So that if my hand is on it where it's going to be, I can reach the flashlight. Flashlight. Uh, and I can also reach the momentary switch. And so far, it has remained in high only setting. So it appears to be behaving itself at the moment. It's unfortunately pouring rain or I would take this out and you know what I could I might be able to get some footage here in the shop of it in action. Let me go throw on the armor. Right well it's fairly dark in here and uh yeah I've got a flashlight on my smart gun. It locks which is nice but if I want to temporarily turn it off oops temporary turn it off, I can partially push the locking button and it will turn off, but then if I let go, it'll turn right back on again, which is nice, should I wanting to be something vaguely resembling stealthy, because everyone knows smart gunners are super stealthy. But that, alternatively, I can use the momentary to turn it on, and if I let go, it will turn off. So you have both momentary on and momentary off options, which is actually really nice. All right. Last thoughts, you know, try to edit this into something vaguely coherent. Right, final thoughts. Well, I need to field test it more before I decide whether or not I will in fact keep it on this blaster. Um, I do like how it mounts, I like how it looks, I like how it functions, just the constantly defaulting back to the strobe I'm not a huge fan of, but like I said, that may just be because I keep poking the button. We will see, but for now I would say this seems to be a decent one. The quality assurance uh, issue notwithstanding, these things happen. Meh. Um, but there you have it. There's my review. My thanks to Feachi for sending me stuff. Hopefully they will keep sending me stuff despite the fact that I was honest. And thank you guys for watching. <laughs>